America's premier barbecue radio show. Join your host, two-time world champion, Andy Groneman and friends, as they sink their teeth into the finest grilling, smoking, and barbecue from coast to coast with the industry's leading pitmasters. Stay tuned for great tips, techniques, and products that will enhance your backyard experience by being a part of the Barbecue Radio Network. Thank you for tuning in and welcome to Barbecue Radio Network, where we bring you the tips and tricks from legends and leaders in the barbecue world. I'm your host, Andy Groneman, along with executive producer T-Bone and my co-host, who has won the American Royal. He's had his barbecue nachos voted to the national must-have barbecue bucket list in Inc. Magazine. And he's at least the second best-looking guy in the room, Todd Johns. <laughs> well, T-Bone's the best-looking guy, so we know that puts you back. Yeah, buddy. I didn't say I was any better. <laughs> I've got the face for radio, brother. <laughs> Well, we are excited today to have a returning guest. He is synonymous with barbecue and outdoor cooking. He's been to 70 countries across six continents, uh, and he just loves to share barbecue and live fire cooking techniques from around the globe. Stephen Reichlin will be joining us today. He's a James Beard Award winner. He's a PBS star with shows like Project Smoke and Project Fire. Check out his website, stephenreichlin.com or barbecuebible.com. You can sign up for his Up and Smoke News letter where he shares lots and lots of recipes and tricks and you know what t-bone really has something cool to tell you about because he got a neat giveaway set up for us uh to tie to the barbecue bible which is celebrating 25 years in market hey do you want an autographed copy of the barbecue bible well i do do i oh, oh okay well then i guess i don't have any left to give away <laughs> <laughs> that's not true we we've got an abundance of them you're gonna get a jar of Stephen Reichland's Project Smoke Barbecue Spice Rub. You're going to get a nameplate autographed copy of Stephen Reichland's Barbecue Bible. And you know what? <laughs> he, he titled that aptly because now, today, 25 years later, it is the Bible yes. of barbecue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we, we brought a new sales guy on <laughs> staff, and I handed it to him, and I said, here. He was, he was going on a flight out to somewhere else, and I gave it to him and said, here. Read and study chapter one so nobody knows that you're a poser and don't know anything about barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> um, you're also going to get a Barbecue Radio Network t-shirt. Uh, right now that's limited to 2XL. Sorry, guys. Uh, and two Barbecue Radio Network stickers. Now, here's 2XL, all... that's a barbecue medium. Okay. two. So I can go up to barbecue medium. Barbecue medium, yeah, yeah. So we've got barbecue medium. And then Smalls. Is that One of the guys that, that asked a question needed a 4X, and I had to yeah. sew two of the darn things together. So we've got him working <laughs> right, on right. it. Yeah. So our fourth segment. Okay, we're oh, hold up, hold up. Now the requirements oh, for this. More. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you you got to earn this. Follow Stephen Reichlin on Facebook. Done. Follow us on Facebook. Think about it. Oh, yeah, okay. I mean, yeah, yeah, done. <laughs> That's done. what I was wondering. Uh, okay. And also... Send us an Ask Andy question to askandy at barbecueradionetwork.com or you can send it via Facebook Messenger. If your question is used on the air, you're going to get all of that stuff that I mentioned. So it better be a good wow. question. There is a limited supply, but it, but it's in double digits. So Minus the two that Andy and I are taking. So don't yes. feel like you don't have a chance. Yeah. You, you got every chance in the world. Yeah, and we need good questions. Lord knows we need good questions. Absolutely. Speaking of which. <laughs> so in our fourth segment, we're going to talk with Todd about pit control and airflow and all of that good stuff. Oh, okay. Now I get to. Uh, now now, now we've got an Ask Andy question. <laughs> this is from Catherine Cecil in Greenwood, Illinois. What does Catherine have well, to say? Hello, Catherine. Catherine wants to. I think she's got a great question because I've wondered this and just kind of felt it out and you've probably guys probably done that the same at first i guess my question boils down to how much is enough and how much is too much i'm talking about rubs my husband complains that it needs more but it seems like i'm using too much what's the secret well so my answer to that question usually is too much is just enough yeah. And I can say that about a lot of things, but in general, and it depends on what you're cooking. Obviously, I always say it depends. Yeah. If it's a piece of chicken or a small fillet of fish, 
You don't need to put a quarter cup of rub on it. You can lightly season that. Okay, that's literally seasoning. Yes, you can lightly season it. If it's a steak or a larger cut like a roast, you can put the rub to it. It's not going to hurt it. And and some of those flavors are going to cook away over time. I mean, what do you... Uh, if it was a, a slab of ribs, Todd, what do you... Well, I think you also need to know what your spice blend is. And and is it high sugar? Is it high salt? And what are you cooking on? All that's going to have an impact, too. If you're cooking over direct fire and you've got a high sugar rub, it's going to not caramelize. It's going to burn. Correct. And, and if you have something that's got a high salt content, then, you know, you need to go you need to be careful with that or it's just going to taste like a salt block yeah and you know gosh there's just there's so many pieces that play into that and you talk about the different makeups of rubs you know anymore there's all uh, there's a lot of new rubs that are doing things like giving you some depth with citric acid or adding other malic acids or things to it and all of that plays into it too but i i think a good general rule of thumb is uh, the bigger the piece of meat, the more rub it can take. A red meat can definitely take yep, more than a yep, white meat. Yep, definitely. You know, you need for something like beef or even lamb, I mean, you really need something. Or big cuts of meat, pork butts. I mean, you really can't do too much because there's so much mass there that the, you know, the bark to the ratio of bark to the rest of it is is not is not much. So Yeah, the first time I threw some OBQ on, on a steak... I thought I was being generous and then cooked it and cooked it well. It was like, you know, everything was fine. But then after I ate it, I was like, I made a mistake. And uh, they, I did not put enough on. And there are some of those steak rubs that have meat tenderizer in them. And so you can get a little bit sideways doing that as well. If you've got a rub that's got meat tenderizer in it and you put a lot of it on, it's actually going to break that down and, and make it a little mealy. So, so you have to pay attention to those kind of things, too. So, Andy, how do you feel about about rubbing and seasoning and then doing it like the night before versus maybe 15, 20, 30 minutes before you're ready to cook? That has a big impact on the finished product, too, right? Huge impact. Um, and, again, it, chicken versus a brisket, yeah. right? If I've got boneless, skinless chicken breasts and I do that overnight, I could come back and they're going to be gray. Yeah. Like the, the rub has actually started to cure the meat. Yeah, it's cooking it. Yeah, yeah. cooking the protein. Um, and, and you just don't want that. Whereas a brisket, I could, and again, I don't have a as much salt. I've got a lot of chilies and paprika and other things in that rub. Um, so, you know, I can put that on and let that ride for six, eight hours overnight. It's a 20-pound piece of meat. Yeah, I don't. I I don't believe in doing it over. I'm, my preference is not to season and let it sit and wrap it in the film. And um, I I just don't think it's necessary. So really, what is your time frame? Really, I just want to hydrate, rehydrate those dehydrated portions or, or components of that rub, like dehydrated garlic and onion and pe the peppers. So I just want the the natural juices from the meat to be drawn out by the sugar and salt and rehydrate those things. So it might be 15, 20 minutes. And when it starts to look wet and you're no longer seeing those dry granules, then you're ready to go. Um, and that does two things for you. Number one, you've gotten that moisture to the service and it can start wicking the flavor back in. But number two, if you leave that rub on the surface dry, it'll actually form a crust because the meat will start to steam as it cooks. And it's just like that... Uh, salt crusted baked potato that you do in yep. the oven it actually forms a protective barrier and you won't get the smoke and things in there you'll actually just steam it inside the rub it becomes shake and bake right? yes it becomes shake and bake that is a great way to think about it and i helped well i want to thank all things barbecue for the ask andy segment you know it was brought to you this month by the smoke on wheels bootleg barbecue sauce which of course you can get at atbbq.com and we want to thank Catherine from greenwood illinois for her her question we will get a t-shirt headed her way next segment we are going to be talking with Stephen reichland pbs star author instructor we're going to dig into some great flavors and techniques check out his website at barbecuebible.com that's b-a-r-b-e-c-u-e-b-i-b-l-e.com and you can sign up for his up and smoke newsletter there coming up it's Stephen reichland right here on barbecue radio network 
Except this love smells like another one of your award-winning steaks that you're grilling on your new Holstein grill. At Holstein Manufacturing, we know that love comes in all shapes and sizes, and that's why we have all kinds of different grills and cookers to choose from. Get ready to fall in love. Go to our website at HolsteinMFG.com. We build a grill, Holstein Manufacturing. Holstein Manufacturing, we build a grill. Hey, Dad. Yeah? You remember that ball game we went to a couple years ago? Sure. And how you didn't have enough cash for two hot dogs, so you walked with me on your shoulders until we found an ATM? And then when we got back to our seats, we never saw the hot dog guy again. Well, I don't remember all that. Yeah, that was an awesome game. You never know which moments will be the ones they'll remember forever. So take time to be a dad today. Learn more at one 877 dad or visit fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. Wake up and text. Text and eat. Mm -hmm. Text and catch the bus. Text and miss your stop. Wait, 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 wait. Text and be late to work. Sorry, I'm late. Text and work. Text and pretend to work. Text and act surprised when someone calls you out for not working. <clears throat> Me? Text and meet up with a friend you haven't seen in forever. Hi. Oh, hey. Text and complain that they're on their phone the whole time. Ugh. Text and listen to them complain that you're on your phone the whole time. Ugh. Text and whatever. But when you get behind the wheel, give your phone to a passenger. Put it in the glove box. Just don't text and drive. Visit StopTextsStopRex.org. A public service announcement brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. This spring, or earn your associate degree online for less than half the cost of a university with Barton Online. We're always enrolling, so you can get started anytime. We have 16-week and 8-week sessions starting January 22nd, and four more sessions throughout the rest of the semester. Tackle your gen eds for the first two years of college and save time and money with Barton Online. Visit online.bartonccc.edu and enroll today. Talking with Branson from Big Creek Crossing. Winter is here, and that means cold weather. Big Creek Crossing in Hayes is here to keep you warm and in style. Stop on by to find the latest trends in winter clothes, including jackets, shoes and boots, leggings, shirts, and more. As we welcome in 2024, don't forget we offer more than just apparel. Here you'll find cozy home items, health and beauty products, food, entertainment, and more. So stop on by this winter to get out of the cold. You'll find just about everything for the whole family. Only at Big Creek Crossing in Hayes. Power Computers has the one for you. Just tell us what you want your computer to do. We'll transfer your files from your old hard drive. Your satisfaction is for what we strive. And we don't speak in gigahertz, bytes, and RAM. We stick with the language that you understand. We're the tech savvy folks at Jackson and Tim. Bauer Computers, we make it make sense. What are we doing? What are you hungry for, honey? Pizza sounds really good right now. Hmm, stuffed crust or... No, I want real hometown-style pizza. Lomato's has the best pie in town, and they have this one that has cream cheese on it, which is to die for. Next stop, Lomato's Pizza on 9th Street, please. Ask for cream cheese on your pizza or just go traditional. 623-2888 for delivery or carryout. Lomato's Pizza, downtown Hayes. Ask for cream cheese on your pizza? abso freaking lootly baby. Electric space heaters can be a great way to keep warm during the winter when used safely. Plug space heaters directly into a wall outlet, never into an extension cord or power strip. Only use space heaters in occupied rooms and always ensure there's a working smoke detector. Keep space heaters three feet away from drapes, furniture, and other flammable materials. A safety message from Midwest Energy. 
a customer-owned cooperative, making energy work for you. When in drought, use your water smarts. Consider these simple tips to save water at home. Follow rules your community has put into place to restrict water use. Check for leaks in your faucets, toilets, and shower heads. Replace water-wasting fixtures with high-performing WaterSense labeled models. Take a sprinkler break or use water smart landscaping techniques. Get creative and find ways to reuse water rather than wasting it. For more ways to use your water smarts, visit watersmarthaze.com. It's the most exciting sport in America, and it's on every Sunday. Are you ready? your home for the NFL playoffs and Super Bowl 58. The award-winning Barbecue Radio Network, I'm Andy Groneman, along with executive producer T-Bone and my co-host, Plowboy Barbecue's own Todd Johns. We've got a returning guest this week, and it is always great getting a chance to catch up with him. He's been to 70 countries across six continents in a never-ending effort to learn and share barbecue and live-fire cooking techniques from around the globe. He's a James Beard award-winning author, a PBS star with shows like Project Smoke and Project Fire. Check out his websites at stephenreichland.com or thebarbecuebible.com. Welcome to the show, Stephen. Well, thank you. It's nice to be back. I want to talk about the milestone that you've hit. This year, this spring, marks 25 years since the release of the Barbecue Bible. And for our listeners that don't know, uh, that milestone comes with accolades along the way, a million copies in print. The book's been translated into 17 languages. So it truly is one of those staples uh, that you've got in your collection. Uh, Todd, Todd and yeah, I were talking. If you don't have it, you need it. You, it, you know, and it is, it's a classic. Well, thank you, gentlemen. You know, it's uh, <laughs> funny. I've, the, the number of people who have said to me, yeah, that's how, that's what got me into barbecue. Uh, and of course, when I wrote it, I had no idea that I would spend the next 25 years uh, exploring this amazing field that we're in, you know, both from a cooking point of view, a restaurant point of view, a traveling uh, point of view. Uh, but uh, really, barbecue has become my professional life, and uh, it's been an amazing, amazing ride. Amazing ride. The cool thing about the Barbecue Bible that, that really made it exciting was the global aspect of it, the food, like, you know, a char siu. We didn't have the, the internet wasn't really uh, pumping like it is now. You couldn't go and find a video of you grilling this from a PBS show. You had you didn't know how to find that data, and you made it <laughs> you accessible had to read a book. To, yeah, you made it accessible <laughs> to us uh, in in ways that that type of information was not accessible before. And not not only the food, Andy, but just the culture too. And so for all of us that have been doing American Southern barbecue, it was just something totally out of bounds, but still in the same family and just understanding the cultural aspect that went into all that as well well again thank you gentlemen you know i, I guess i was a frustrated anthropologist a uh, student of history and culture and barbecue enabled me to to explore those in a practical way that actually enabled me to make a living so and eat well so <laughs> what's changed for you since then in terms of how you look at, at that style of, of cuisine that you presented 25 years ago. You've obviously put out, you know, 32 books since then. Uh, Project Smokes, you know, one of my favorites. There's some cool, like, Vietnamese beef jerky in there that I love to make. But from that initial journey, and you spent, you know, three years working to build the Barbecue Bible, what's, what's changed? What's different and cool and still gets you excited? You know, uh, just the, uh, the the continuing evolution of barbecuing and grilling. When I started, uh, believe it or not, the concept of uh, uh, most people had never heard of indirect grilling. Nobody did smoking unless you happened to come from Texas or uh, Kansas City or the Carolinas. Uh, uh, in terms of equipment, uh, it was, you know, the pellet grill virtually didn't exist. The Kamado grill was a real outlier. Uh, people grilled maybe once or twice a month uh, on the weekend and 
what we grilled was uh, primarily the protein, the you know the steak or the sausage or the chicken. And by the way, we say grilled, but when, at least when it came to chicken, and at least to my family, burnt was probably uh, a <laughs> more accurate way than uh, than grilled. Uh, you know, I, I grew up on chicken that was. Uh, half frozen because somebody forgot to take it out of the freezer and then they marinated it sweet barbecue sauce put it on a uh, only partially lit fire uh, so you got all that mm. lighter fluid kind of flavor delicious and then it did it did get hot enough to burn the sugar in the barbecue sauce right. while leaving the chicken frozen you know, in, the in the middle <laughs> that's right and so you'd wind up ordering Chinese food that was barbecue nice. for me when I grew up but, I, I grew know, up today I mean the level of sophistication, um, the sophistication of the grills, the fact that we grill, you know, 24-7, really many of us all year round, uh, we grill vegetables, we grill seafood, we grill desserts, we grill breakfast. I mean, these are all just, uh, I like to see, I, I like to think the barbecue Bible uh, gave birth to all of it, but it was really <laughs> just uh, legions of grill masters just taking the art forward. And sophistication is, is really the right word for it because it has taken on that. And, you know, as so as you're moving forward, um, I know that you've got a lot of new things going on, too, that are going to, you know, help drive that next set. What, what, what's happening that's new right now? Well, I guess the uh, first big thing on my horizon uh, is a new TV show. It's called Planet Barbecue. And it reprises this idea of bubble grilling. We shot it in San Antonio. It will launch Memorial Day. And, um, you know, we've got episodes on uh, Brazilian grilling. Uh, I was just editing one this morning called East Meets West, you know, where we did kind of a fusion of Asian uh, flavors and grilling techniques with uh, American ingredients. Uh, we have uh, shows on... Uh, Argentinian grilling. Uh, there's one called uh, From Caracas to uh, Lima, which explores uh, Northern South American cooking. Uh, another show dives into uh, German cooking, uh, German grilling, which is not well known in the United States, but there's an incredibly sophisticated tr grill tradition in Germany. So that's, that's kind of one big project. Uh, second big project also bears the name of Planet Barbecue. Uh, and it is a line of uh, frozen, ready-to-eat and eat barbecue that I have uh, developed uh, with two partners, my stepson and uh, and a partner who, uh, who used to be the food and beverage manager at the Broadmoor Resort where I ran Barbecue University. So uh, we're very excited about that. You know, because if I trace my own personal evolution so people could kind of read about my food in my books, they could watch my food on TV. You can even get an inkling of the seasonings, you know, by buying my spice rubs and barbecue sauces. But this is really an opportunity for people to taste what they would eat if they came to my house and had a barbecue in my backyard. I mean, these are my ribs. This is my brisket. These are my wings. Uh, so, yeah, the, um, the smoked sriracha wings are what really jumped out for me when I was looking through the site and, uh, and checking out all of the, the Planet Barbecue meats that uh, were in existence so that's that's just awesome yeah so you know i um I, one would think after 25 years maybe i should be slowing down but i've been busy as ever yeah so i you know and it's funny that you mentioned that one of the one of the things that uh i used out of so your your barbecue bible sauce rub and marinade book you had a, a sesame soy butter based that i used for ages as my wing based uh, just added a ton of umami bomb to, to wings, so it's going to be great to play with the uh, sriracha ones, too. You know, it's so much fun to hear you say this, because when, when you're an author or a TV host, you know, you are very in the moment when you're writing about it, and that's usually two or three years before the book comes out. By the time the book comes out, you know, you're on to the next book or the next show, and you sort of forget about all these great recipes that were really enjoyable. And, uh, you know, and just uh, note to self, you know, uh, pull out that book and make yeah. that, uh, that yeah. basic. Absolutely. Absolutely. That was good. We are talking with Stephen Reichlin. Check out his website, barbecuebible.com. And while you're there, sign up for the Up and Smoke newsletter. And get lots of great recipes and tips. When we come back with Stephen, we're going to pick his brain on some of the biggest mistakes he can help you overcome. Hit his website, barbecuebible.com. Talking to Stephen Reichlin, more next, right here on Barbecue Radio Network. My name is Judy Teeter, and I'm the mother of three boys. My youngest, Joe, 
loves sports, music, and his youth group. One day, Joe asked me to drive him to school. We were going through a green light when another car ran a red light and hit us, killing Joe. The National Safety Council estimates one in four car crashes involves a cell phone. Hands-free is no safer. Visit nsc.org slash calls kill. Remember the time you almost volunteered to work in a soup kitchen? Or when you almost visited the veterans hospital? Or when you almost brought dinner to your neighbor with AIDS? Remember all the times you almost helped, almost gave? Well, it's only human, this almost giving. But the truth is, it's the same as not giving at all. Don't almost give, give. Visit our website at don'talmostgive.org. A message from the Ad Council. Talking with Branson from Big Creek Crossing. Winter is here, and that means cold weather. Big Creek Crossing in Hayes is here to keep you warm and in style. Stop on by to find the latest trends in winter clothes, including jackets, shoes and boots, leggings, shirts, and more. As we welcome in 2024, don't forget we offer more than just apparel. Here you'll find cozy home items, health and beauty products, food, entertainment, and more. So stop on by this winter to get out of the cold. You'll find just about everything for the whole family. Only at Big Creek Crossing in Hayes. Attention high school juniors. Explore your career paths at Barton Community College's Junior Day on February 14th. This fun and free day features an on-campus tour, giveaways, yard games, pizza, and did we mention $3,000 and scholarships will be up for grabs. Learn about a variety of career paths, some of which can get you into the workforce and making money in just one semester. Sign up online now through February 1st at juniorday.bartoncc.edu. Telephone, hungry for honey pizza sounds really good right now hmm, stuff crossed or no i want real hometown style pizza lamato's has the best pie in town and they have this one that has cream cheese on it which is to die for next stop lamato's pizza on 9th street please ask for cream cheese on your pizza or just go traditional 623-2888 for delivery or carry out lamato's pizza downtown hayes ask for cream cheese on your pizza Absolutely, freaking lootly, baby. Winter heating bills constrain family budgets. The Low Income Energy Assistance Program, or LEAP, helps eligible households pay part of their home energy costs with a one-time-per-year benefit. Midwest Energy and Kansas DCF are hosting LEAP sign-up events Tuesday, January 30th in Hayes from 10 to 2 at the Hayes Public Library and in Colby on Wednesday, January 31st from 10 to 2 at the Colby Event Center. Lunch will be served and you can sign up on-site for LEAP. Midwest Energy, a customer-owned cooperative, may energy work for you. Everyone wants an attractive landscape at their home, but having a beautiful landscape doesn't have to use a lot of water or cost a lot of money. Use Water Smart Landscaping to create the perfect look while still conserving water. Plan before you plant to ensure you're maximizing space and minimizing the need for water. Go native or choose plants that require less water to live. And finally, maintain healthy soil to help maximize water retention. Get schooled on a water smart landscape at watersmarthaze.com. Hey, it's Nikki here from the Midday Show. Join me every Wednesday during the 1 o'clock hour for your chance to win a free cup of coffee from our friends at Scooters and Hayes. It's the Midday Show's midweek pick me up from Scooters and Hayes, right here on KISS 104.7.
Barbecue Radio Network with my co-host, pitmaster extraordinaire, Todd Johns, our executive producer, T-Bone, and I'm Andy Groneman. We are back talking with Stephen Reichlin, author, instructor, and TV personality. He's hosted thousands of students through his Barbecue University. You've seen him as host of shows like Project Smoke and Project Fire. He's had over six million copies of, of his cookbooks in print. And we're excited to be chatting about the Barbecue Bible. It's celebrating 25 years on the market. But, you know, as we're getting ready to roll into grilling season and and knock the dust off of the pits, I really wanted to talk about what are some of the biggest mistakes that you've seen at the grill, Steve? And what can we do to help our listeners really get the season started off right? Well, that's a very good question. So the first thing to remember is that the key to success in grilling is for you to control the fire not have the fire control you. Mm. And uh, that means, you know, uh, you see guys, because it's usually guys, build a raging fire, throw food on it, it burns, uh, and then they do it again, and then they do it again, and then they do it again. So, uh, you know, one is, if it doesn't work the first time and the second time, it's probably not going to work the third time, and you need to change your method. Now, a couple specific mistakes. So when I build a fire for direct grilling, I'm always working with a three-zone fire. I've got one part of the grill, usually in the back, that's very hot for searing. I've got a part in the middle that is a little cooler. Uh, I use that for cooking. And then very important, a fire-free safety zone in the front of the grill where you can move your food if you get a flare-up or if the food starts to burn or if you just want to keep it warm. So that is a very important, that's a big mistake and a, and a great way to uh, solve it. Uh, Another mistake I see very commonly is putting too much food on the grill at one time. And what happens, you know, if you cover every square inch of the grill, great. Uh, If you get a flare up, you have no room to maneuver. So I always leave a third of the grill food free. Okay, that way, if I get a flare up, something starts to burn or cook too much. I've got room to maneuver. Yeah. And for me, you get as soon as you fill that grate, especially if you put your lid back on. Now you've completely wrecked the airflow through your grill too. So you're not you're going to get weird hot spots and you're not going to get flow through your exhaust. So it it makes a huge difference. Yeah, exactly. And then sort of I don't know if this is a mistake as much as an advice, but you probably heard me say this on the show. Uh, keep it hot, keep it clean, keep it lubricated. That refers to, um, you know, starting with a hot grill grate, cleaning it either with a stiff wire brush or a lot of people have switched to using a wood scraper, which doesn't have bristles, you know, that can, that can shed and wind up in your food. And above all, oiling the grate before you put the food on it. And for oiling, um, uh, my kind of go-to method is taking a folded paper towel, dipping it in oil, and drawing it across the bars of the grate. Not only not oils, not only oils the grate, but also uh, cleans the grate. Uh, however, on the show, you you know you may have seen me. This is a technique I learned in Israel. Uh, you take a half an onion, you impale it on the end of a barbecue fork, you dip it in the oil, draw it across the bars of the grate, and that's another great fun uh, uh, way to oil your grate. Yeah, the the comment about, you know, keep it hot and keep it clean, that's one that I see all the time is this white, you know, especially with people smoking, this white billowy smoke that is just going to not taste good. And so, you know, to teach people that you really want that, that bluish gray, really thin, you can barely see it, it's very transparent, that smoke is a beautiful smoke, it's going to lend right. some really, really good flavor, so that's one that that I always, you know, you can tell like who doesn't know how to tend a fire and needs some help. Well, and air, you know, what the, at the bottom of behind that is aeration. You yeah, want absolutely. a well aerated, you want a well aerated fire, right? Because that, you know, as long as you have good airflow, um, that is going to give you clean smoke and, you know, wonderful, clean tasting food. Yeah. Yeah. And, and building a big fire to your original point, that's going to really choke that down too. So, uh, you know, going back to the barbecue Bible, um, I just wondering if there was anything in there that you can remember was just kind of maybe a couple of favorites. Um, when I first started, 
cooking uh, in the backyard. Uh, one of the sauces that I'd made, and I made it a few times, gave it away as Christmas gifts one year, was a, I believe it was a blood orange barbecue sauce that was in the rubs and sauces and marinades book. So, and in, in fact, I gave that book out to my groomsmen at my wedding. So, there's Well, that. what a great, what a, actually, speaking about weddings, I just have to tell you a funny story. So, uh, a few years ago, I got a uh, an email and a photo from a couple that when they started, when they went out on their first date, uh, he brought her a copy of the barbecue Bible and they were married four or five years later and they swore their vows over the barbecue Bible. <laughs> wow. Is, now that's a great a, story. That was, that was a good, that was a great and, story. You know, Todd and I were talking off air earlier about, and not about getting mentioned. married. Yeah, not, not about, about getting, getting married. married. <laughs> but yeah. if we did, Andy, it'd be over a barbecue. Yeah, you're Bible. my work wife. It'd be over a barbecue <laughs> Bible. Um, no, we were talking about how this was, you know, probably if not our first book, one of our first books that we'd ever purchased, uh, both of us. And so my daughter has mine when she bought her house. You know, that went with the house, and and she absconded with one of my hasty bakes too. <laughs> To, to her new house but you know it's it's just funny that it does become kind of a generational or or family thing I, food in general is the least common denominator and it's so great to hear cool stories like that like they you know they bonded over that and had it at their wedding that's amazing and good thing you have 19 other things to cook on that she could have that hasty <laughs> bake <laughs> I don't have quite as many grills as Stephen does. So what's what's your uh, what's your back patio look like these days? Well, I've uh, actually trimmed things down a little bit. My wife is, uh, you know, believe it or not, there are some spouses that don't get wildly excited about. Uh, uh, you know, having 17 grills in your backyard. So I think we are down to, let me see, one, two, three, four, five, six, six grills here. And then we have a place up north in uh, Martha's Vineyard and got a few more grills there. So, I mean, maybe eight or nine there. But And we're not talking about the, the, the secret hidden storage building of cookers anyway. Oh, we got one of those too. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, we, you course. know, we have about 40 grills at Barbecue University. Yeah, so, that's, uh, that's what I was thinking. I, I remember one of those first episodes of that where you had all of the various cookers all lined out and I'm like, yes. This is, <laughs> yeah, this is the way it should be. <laughs> wasn't that well? Yeah. So, the Ten Commandments of Perfect Grilling. Like, give give us like the top the top three commandments for our uh, for our listeners. Oh, sure. Okay. Well, uh, number one, be organized. And you know, uh, this is really true of anything you do in the kitchen, and for that matter, in life. But because grilling takes place outdoors. The last thing you want to do is start grilling and then realize you forgot your basting brush, realize you forgot your tongs, yeah, I realize you forgot your olive oil. So uh, the French have a word for it. It's called the mise en place. It means uh, yes. basically your setup. But really think through everything you're going to need before you start grilling. Um, <clears throat> another, this is so basic, but, you know, damn, it's, it hasn't it happened to all of us. Gauge your fuel. You know, there's nothing more uh, sickening than getting halfway through a barbecue and either running out of propane or running out of charcoal. So enough said on that one. Yep. Uh, let's see. Uh, another one uh, is uh, know when to baste. We talked about that a little bit. If it's a sugar-based uh, based or glaze or barbecue sauce, that goes on the end. Uh, give it a rest. That's an important one when you're grilling steak. You know, uh, we have this expression hot off the grill, but in fact, the steak will taste better if it comes off the grill, it rests for a minute or so on a wire rack over sheet pan. Oh yeah, absolutely. And that gives, gives, you know, it gives the juices a chance to uh, redistribute. Well, so thank you, Stephen. Uh, don't forget folks to head over to barbecuebible.com, register so you're up to date via the Up and Smoke newsletter. Hit the store there for all your books, tools, and accessories, or even some of that ready-to-eat Planet Barbecue meat. You can head on over to stephenreichland.com and check out his social media as well as stream episodes from his television shows like Project Fire. Coming up, we're going to be talking with Todd about airflow and pit management right here on Barbecue Radio Network. We build a grill, Holstein Manufacturing. 
you have a better recipe for when you grill. Better ingredients, better cuts of meat, and because you're using a grill from Holstein Manufacturing, well, a better grill. You take grilling seriously, and at Holstein Manufacturing, we make a serious grill. Find your new grill now at HolsteinMFG.com. We build a grill, Holstein Manufacturing. Holstein Manufacturing, we build a grill. Unlike other health concerns, mental illness is not always easy to see. Depression won't show up on an eye chart, and you won't find PTSD by looking at a thermometer. Sorting out a mental health concern takes professional diagnosis and treatment. Anxiety won't just go away under a bandage. If you or a loved one has a mental health concern, call 1-800-662-HELP for free and confidential information and treatment referral. Learn more at samhsa.gov support. Electric space heaters can be a great way to keep warm during the winter when used safely. Plug space heaters directly into a wall outlet, never into an extension cord or power strip. Only use space heaters in occupied rooms and always ensure there's a working smoke detector. Keep space heaters three feet away from drapes, furniture, and other flammable materials. A safety message from Midwest Energy, a customer-owned cooperative, making energy work for you. When in drought, use your water smarts. Consider these simple tips to save water at home. Follow rules your community has put into place to restrict water use. Check for leaks in your faucets, toilets, and shower heads. Replace water-wasting fixtures with high-performing WaterSense labeled models. Take a sprinkler break or use water-smart landscaping techniques. Get creative and find ways to reuse water rather than wasting it. For more ways to use your water smarts, visit watersmarthaze.com. Our computers has the one for you. Just tell us what you want your computer to do. We'll transfer your files from your old hard drive. Your satisfaction is for what we strive. And we don't speak in gigahertz, bytes, and RAM. We stick with the language that you understand. We're the tech savvy folks at Jackson and 10th. Bauer Computers, we make it make sense. Talking with Branson from Big Creek Crossing. Winter is here, and that means cold weather. Big Creek Crossing in Hayes is here to keep you warm and in style. Stop on by to find the latest trends in winter clothes, including jackets, shoes and boots, leggings, shirts, and more. As we welcome in 2024, don't forget we offer more than just apparel. Here you'll find cozy home items, health and beauty products, food, entertainment, and more. So stop on by this winter to get out of the cold. You'll find just about everything for the whole family. Only at Big Creek Crossing in Hayes. The blizzard of savings continues at the Arrow. Come get the best smartphones on us, including the powerful new iPhone 15, the fan favorite Samsung Galaxy S23, and the surprisingly efficient Pixel 7 Pro from Google. All on us with select unlimited plans. In fact, get four of these phones, along with four unlimited lines, for just $100 a month. For the best provider of cellular and internet solutions near you, shop your local Viero Wireless today. Restrictions apply. See store for details. Pick up a class this spring or earn your associate degree online for less than half the cost of a university with Barton Online. We're always enrolling so you can get started anytime. We have 16-week and 8-week sessions starting January 22nd and 4 more sessions throughout the rest of the semester. Tackle your gen eds for the first two years of college and save time and money with Barton Online. Visit online.bartonccc.edu and enroll today. What are we doing? What are you hungry for, honey? Pizza sounds really good right now. Hmm, stuffed crust or... No, I want real hometown-style pizza. Lomato's has the best pie in town, and they have this one that has cream cheese on it, which is to die for. Next stop, Lomato's Pizza on 9th Street, please. Ask for cream cheese on your pizza or just go traditional. 623-2888 for delivery or carryout. Lomato's Pizza, downtown Hayes. Ask for cream cheese on your pizza? abso freaking lootly baby. This is two-time world barbecue champion and host of Barbecue Radio Network, Andy Groneman, and I want to invite you to listen to America's number one barbecue radio show with myself and my co-host, four-time world barbecue champion, Todd Johns. That's right, Andy. Barbecue Radio Network leads the way with barbecue Hall of Fame guests as well as other world champions dedicated to raising the game for backyard grillers and smokers everywhere. Barbecue Radio Network gets cooking at 10.30 Sunday mornings on this My Town Media station. 
Barbecue Radio Network. This segment is brought to you by Holstein Manufacturing. Check them out at HolsteinMFG.com. They have NSF certified cookers and grills, and of course, my favorite corn roasters. And do not forget their mobile event and catering rigs as well. Check them out at HolsteinMFG.com. Stephen just left, but man, there's just so much stuff as you think about the 25 years and the Yes, the Barbecue Bible's been around that long, but over the 32 other books that he's presented us with, like, he brought to us the caveman steak. Yep, yep, um, yep. And, and just so many other things. What's your favorite? Well, he is the inventor of the beer can chicken. And yes. Who has not done a beer can chicken? And you may recall he did a whole book about beer can chicken. Yeah, so. yeah, absolutely. I mean, so there's just so many places that get touched with things that he's introduced people to. For me, the caveman steak was the first really cool. How many times have you done this where you've fired up the coals and thrown the steak right on the coals and people lose their minds? Right, right, yeah. But and you know it works. You, and you learned it from him. Yeah. And I remember him doing uh, this, like, linen, like, cotton linen wrapped roast, and then he just put it directly on the fire like the caveman steak, left it in the linen. It's like... Uh, that's just the craziest yeah, thing I've ever seen in my life. Just, you could break it off almost because yeah. it, it dried the, the linen out after he soaked it. But yeah, I just I, it's amazing the amount of cool stuff that's come out of all of the things that he's gone around the globe and learned for us. Yeah, so, it's just been out of bounds, right? That's the thing that I love is just it's craziness. It's just things that you just don't even think of. Yeah. Well, so it's time now for our All Things Barbecue product spotlight. Their website is www.atbbq.com. All Things Barbecue has all the tools and accessories you need to take your barbecue to the next level. Your neighbors will be jumping over the fence to get a taste. So get fired up and get the supplies to do it all at All Things Barbecue, www.atbbq.com. And I know Todd has been chomping at the bit for this. He has a great product he wanted to oh, share. Oh, Andy, I am I'm telling you this this one's for you, buddy. This is the Napoleon 3 in 1 roasting rib rack. This is the Swiss Army knife for your grill, Andy. The reversible rack lets you roast chicken, pork, or beef, lifting the meat from the cooking grids for airflow and convection. Flip the rack over and roast a beer can chicken. Beer can chicken. Yes. It's got the hole right in the yeah, rack for it. I it's got a it. stable stand. And then the roasting rack is perfect for ribs, which you can roast up to four racks at once. Remember to slide a drip tray under the roast to catch those juices for that yummy cook for tasty gravy. $23.99, and it's dishwasher safe. Nice, nice. Very cool. Well, we'll check that out at the website, atbbq.com. And, you know... Speaking of using a rack and getting good airflow underneath the meat, and, you know, when we were talking with Stephen, that's part of the Ten Commandments of grilling is keeping that airflow right, having the zone cooking. But let's talk a little bit about that. You know, fire management and airflow in your pit, uh, what, what's the, some of the best ways to address that and handle it? Well, you, you need to understand what you're cooking on all, you know, all the time. That's usually like one of the things, you know, when people ask, uh, as you know, Andy, like, how long is this going to take? Or do I cook it fat side up or fat side down? You know, the, the first answer is a question. What are you cooking on? So with airflow, are you cooking on an offset? And I've been playing with my uh, all things or Yoder smokers, uh, Cimarron, stretch Cimarron smoker. Yeah, yeah. And that is... I've really gotten into just playing with the airflow, not only um, kind of from the inlet, but in the barrel and just creating zones. It's a lot of fun. So uh, and you have a damper on the one side that you can pull that changes the airflow in the front of the pit yep. to the back. Yeah. And so how you set up uh, can really change the airflow. Um and, you know, usually it's the, uh, you control from the back. So you control where the fire's at. And you, uh, you know, if you need a little, uh, need to go a little hotter, you open it up. If you need to go a little lower, you close it down, leave the stack wide open. Uh, but then there's something like a, a Kamado Joe or a big green egg. And, you know, you've, you've got to really watch the airflow in those or it'll spike on you. So usually it's just a crack on the bottom 
and then I'm usually wide open on the top, and but I control on the bottom. And you know, it'll really allow that air to come in, warm up on the coals, and then go up and convect around the dome. Um, so you know, it really is. You you got to know what you're cooking on, and don't be afraid to experiment. Move pieces of meat around to different parts of the grate, and just get a feel for for how it works um, with your particular setup. And when you talk about an offset, um, you've even got so many variations in an offset cooker. So you're talking about what I would call a traditional offset, yeah. which is a bottom-up cook. There are reverse flow offsets. Yep. And then you've got what, I mean, it's been around for a long time, but it's relatively new in, in terms of contests and hitting the market where people can purchase them as a Texas-style offset where you're cooking top down like yeah. a jambo or an outlaw or one of those kind of pits and the big difference in those like mine like you said is a is the the heat from the bottom and rising up as it goes across this diffuser but something like a a, a hotter and faster texas pit it's all about the location of the firebox the higher that firebox is in comparison to the barrel the more direct that airflow is going to shoot across the top of the barrel versus gradually come from the bottom and find its way up. Yeah, and it's funny, the first time that, that I cooked on that style of, of cooker, um, so Rod Gray, who you know, um, I was going to be flying out to cook with a friend of ours, Rob Marion. We, I was flying to, gosh, I think it was the Shelby contest, mm -hmm. uh, and I was going to cook on his Jambo. I had not cooked on one of those. And Rod gave me the super quick tutorial. He's like, when you, he's like. And he's the guy to teach you. Yeah. Pellet envy. He yeah. knows, he knows those pits inside and out. And he said, here's the deal. You're going to run your fire like this. But he's like, if you want to see how it's going to react in the pit, open the doors and you can see the heat signature of that particular pit on the doors. Cause again, it comes in at huh. the top, it rises up and then it, it reflects and it goes back down towards the stack. And so all of them are slightly different, but if you open the doors, there was literally a V huh. on the doors that followed that heat signature. Crazy. And, and of course, he was <laughs> cooking there that weekend, too. I think he won pork, which was amazing because you don't do that in North Carolina. And, <laughs> yeah. and you know, they're slicing your tires on the way out of town. <laughs> but it was, it was just neat to see how the pit cooks and get to cook on one. Yeah, yeah. That's cool, man. I'm geeking out over here. That's pretty cool. <laughs> um, you can see the, the the convection in the barrel. That's and, nuts. And while we all love pellet cookers, that is one thing that you lose if you've learned to cook on a pellet cooker because it does such a great job of controlling the airflow. You don't have to learn how to manage that fire. So even for people that I say, if you if you're starting with a pellet cooker, Go back to charcoal. Go back to wood at some point and learn how to properly manage Yeah, I mean, fire. even if you've got a big green A or a Kamado, you can put a little draft fan on there and uh, just force forced air forced draft so you know it's 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 nice because you can control it electronically but you know you're you are losing that uh, learning that skill set but any not that uh, there's anything wrong with that but. any tips for for just your good old kettle style grill well I think you know Steven said it best it's uh, the three zone fire which he's been teaching since the beginning right so you've got uh, a hot zone on one side of the kettle and then in the middle you've got a cooler zone and then off to the other side on, a, on the opposite of the hot side is a neutral and so what he calls the safe zone and so yeah he's been teaching that forever and uh, I still use that right you need to have something where I'm going to sear, but I, I need to be able to control that, you know, and, and have a place me, on that grate. What was interesting about that is I'd kind of forgotten his terminology for that, and I always just use that as my indirect cooking zone. So when I teach that, I always talk to people about direct and indirect cooking. I'm not thinking of it as like a neutral cool zone where I'm protecting... The meat, I, I put the lid on and I might use it as 300 degrees. Wasn't it crazy just kind of having flashbacks of the, as he was talking and just like three zone fire, taking a, 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 a rag and putting oil on the grate. Like we learned all that stuff from him. Yeah. We want to thank Stephen Reichland for being on the show. And again, we've got a great giveaway for the 25th anniversary of the Barbecue Bible. So make sure you go follow Stephen Reichland on Facebook, follow Barbecue Radio Network, 
and then send in an Ask Andy question to Ask Andy at Barbecue Radio Network.com or just hit us in the Facebook Messenger. Check Stephen out at Barbecue Bible.com or stream his TV shows at StephenReichland.com. And don't forget to head on over to All Things Barbecue at ATBBQ.com and pick up the sauce of the month smoke on wheels kansas city bootleg thank you all for joining us and next week we're excited to bring you aaron franklin right here on barbecue radio network you have a better recipe for when you grill better ingredients better cuts of meat and because you're using a grill from holstein manufacturing well a better grill you take grilling seriously and at holstein manufacturing we make a serious grill find your new grill now at holsteinmfg.com we build a grill holstein manufacturing holstein manufacturing we build a grill Morning, Mama. How you feeling? Great, and I'm ready for you today. I'm checking in on you. Morning meditation? Check. Dressed and ready to work out? Check. Check your blood pressure yet? And check. Boom! Great job, Mom. And about those gold earrings? <laughs> no, ma'am. Now more than ever, it's important that we protect our hearts and the hearts of those we love. Monitor your blood pressure daily and help each other stay motivated. Rally your squad to take the online pledge at releasethepressure.org. Brought to you by the Release the Pressure Coalition and the Ad Council. Our computers has the one for you. Just tell us what you want your computer to do. We'll transfer your files from your old hard drive. Your satisfaction is for what we strive. And we don't speak in gigahertz, bytes, and RAM. We stick with the language that you understand. We're the tech savvy folks at Jackson and Tim. Bauer Computers, we make it make sense. Winter heating bills constrain family budgets. The Low Income Energy Assistance Program, or LEAP, helps eligible households pay part of their home energy costs with a one-time-per-year benefit. Midwest Energy and Kansas DCF are hosting LEAP sign-up events Tuesday, January 30th in Hayes from 10 to 2 at the Hayes Public Library and in Colby on Wednesday, January 31st from 10 to 2 at the Colby Event Center. Lunch will be served and you can sign up on-site for LEAP. Midwest Energy, a customer-owned cooperative making energy work for you. Everyone wants an attractive landscape at their home, but having a beautiful landscape doesn't have to use a lot of water or cost a lot of money. Use Water Smart Landscaping to create the perfect look while still conserving water. Plan before you plant to ensure you're maximizing space and minimizing the need for water. Go native or choose plants that require less water to live. And finally, maintain healthy soil to help maximize water retention. Get schooled on a water smart landscape at watersmarthaze.com. Attention high school juniors. Explore your career paths at Barton Community College's Junior Day on February 14th. This fun and free day features an on-campus tour, giveaways, yard games, pizza, and did we mention $3,000 in scholarships will be up for grabs. Learn about a variety of career paths, some of which can get you into the workforce and making money in just one semester. Sign up online now through February 1st at juniorday.bartoncc.edu. What are we doing? What are you hungry for, honey? Pizza sounds really good right now. Hmm, stuffed crust or... No, I want real hometown-style pizza. Lomato's has the best pie in town, and they have this one that has cream cheese on it, which is to die for. Next stop, Lomato's Pizza on 9th Street, please. Ask for cream cheese on your pizza or just go traditional. 623-2888 for delivery or carryout. Lomato's Pizza, downtown Hayes. Ask for cream cheese on your pizza? Absolutely, baby. Talking with Branson from Big Creek Crossing. Winter is here, and that means cold weather. Big Creek Crossing in Hayes is here to keep you warm and in style. Stop on by to find the latest trends in winter clothes, including jackets, shoes and boots, leggings, shirts, and more. As we welcome in 2024, don't forget we offer more than just apparel. Here you'll find cozy home items, health and beauty products, food, entertainment, and more. So stop on by this winter to get out of the cold. You'll find just about everything for the whole family. Only at Big Creek Crossing in Hayes. The blizzard of savings continues at Viero. Come get the best smartphones on us, including the powerful new iPhone 15, the fan favorite Samsung Galaxy S23, and the surprisingly efficient Pixel 7 Pro from Google, all on us with select unlimited plans. In fact, get four of these phones, along with four unlimited lines, for just $100 a month. For the best provider of cellular and internet solutions near you, shop your local Viero Wireless today. Restrictions apply. See store for details. American Top 40. 
with Ryan Seacrest. Hey, it's Ryan Seacrest. Check out American Top 40 this Saturday, 11 a.m. here on Hayes and Great Ben's number one hit music station, KISS 104.7. Exciting sport in America, and it's on every Sunday. It's the divisional round of the NFL playoffs this weekend. Texans, Ravens, Packers, 49ers, Fox Lions, and Chiefs and Bills. Every NFL playoff game this weekend, right here on your home for the NFL playoffs and Super Bowl 58. What are you hungry for, honey? Pizza sounds really good right now. Hmm, stuffed crust or... No, I want real hometown-style pizza. Lomato's has the best pie in town, and they have this one that has cream cheese on it, which is to die for. Next stop, Lomato's Pizza on 9th Street, please. Ask for cream cheese on your pizza or just go traditional. 623-2888 for delivery or carryout. Lomato's Pizza, downtown Hayes. Ask for cream cheese on your pizza? abso freaking baby. The bakers of Earth Grains Breads combine wholesome and nutritious ingredients with a soft, light texture that your family will love. Our nutritious varieties include 12 grain, wheat berry with honey, 100% whole wheat, and multigrain. Try Earth Grains 12 grain toasted with peanut butter for breakfast, or multigrain with turkey and fresh veggies for a nutritious lunch. Earth Grains Breads. sunny with a high of 32. Tonight, cloudy with freezing drizzle after midnight and a low of 26. Tomorrow, mostly cloudy with a low of 34. Weather this hour is brought to you by T-Mobile and Hayes. T-Mobile has been investing billions to light up their award-winning network, which covers 99% of people in America. And great coverage is just the start, because T-Mobile customers enjoy tons of other benefits. With My Country 93.5 and KISS 104.7 weather, I'm Nicole Howard. And that's why it's good to be...